nature is never asleep, you know, the mountains are always awake and alive and it doesn't take much to bring you back down to your scale. Right when you think that it's no big deal, that's when you're gonna get a rude lesson in how the mountains work. It's not something that you can ever predict as much as you like to be in control of it and you think you are, you're really not. We're gonna go up and meet B-Dan, go skiing on the pass for the first time. I haven't actually been going this year and I haven't seen B-Dan since just right after the accident when I got out of the hospital. Yeah, so Ben Dan, he's a TGR cinematographer and we've been shooting together quite a lot over the last bunch of years. Yeah, the last time that we were hanging out together was uh, when I had my accident in Pemberton. Three, two, one. Ah! Oh! Ah! McNutt! Nick, are you okay? One of the scarier parts about this job is like, the risk is super real and TGR has been Amazing about putting together International Pro Riders Workshop. I've come down to Jackson a bunch over the years for this IPRW. Every year we do these series of scenarios and just to get everyone educated and be comfortable with, with the risks that we deal with. Down here for that for the next few days, but I came a day early to go for hopefully a few runs here with Ben and, and just catch up. Oh. So, uh, How you doing? It's good to see you, man. Yeah, how you do? <laughs> Oh, it's been too long. Oh man, two years. It's nice to have the whole crew back together for another IPRW. Yeah. It's pretty important. Yeah. Glad you finally threw all your surgeries and yeah. back to 100. Yeah, it's been kind of a long yeah. long saga, but feeling good. Feeling yeah. kind of like myself again, finally, so. Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Should we go? Yeah, let's put up, up and go, and go. go for a walk. Oh yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah, right? Feels nice to just walk around with skis on again. I know, this is my first time doing it this year. Yeah. Yeah, so what's it been like for you all this time dealing? Like I was super busy with dealing with that whole transceiver recall stuff and all the news interviews and podcasts and stuff, but. After it happened, like COVID happened and we just drove all the way home. And so it was pretty fresh after the accident parking out, we're in the car for 17 hours yeah. and, and we talked a fair amount about it but i mean after that like just coming home full covid lockdown not really skiing that much like people are skiing a lot and but i like didn't really ski very yeah. much like the first couple of weeks i was home and um yeah it definitely was pretty challenging to like hop back on the horse for sure for me i think like with covid like coming home and having all that downtime and just like kind of being with my just being at home, being with myself and my thoughts, and and um, yes, it was. I mean, it was pretty bottled up for those first six months. I hadn't really processed it that much, so I didn't really start processing it until like we had put out all the social media stuff. Yeah. Man, what a zone! What a just coliseum of peaks up here. We looked at this face that Ian had been wanting to ski for a long time. So Ian and Smoothie went up to ski the main line that he had been planning on. And Lucy and I hiked up a different way to ski these cool bars. Let's do this. Dropping. Riding these bigger faces, it's a really interesting feeling that you get up there. Even though we do have all we can to choose days when the hazard is as low as it can be, it feels like you're getting away with something. That was really I sick, man. Got it. Yep, I'm 100. Things went off without a hitch. We had pretty good snow, really nice light, and everyone made it down on their feet. Yeah, yeah. Christina, tons of slop. Yeah. Super good fun. job. The best thing about IPRW is it's we come from all over the place to to meet because we know that like any of these trips that we go on will all be together and it's really like that crew that you're with is everything right and i've always been like 
a pretty conservative person in the mountains. Like I, I take my risks when it's time and, but I usually, yeah, I think we all have to be yeah. at some sense, right? Like, you know, when, when you watch these ski films, it all looks like we just kind of go hard all the time, but right. there's a lot, that's a whole season worth of, of what we do. You know, it's not, right. not our day to day. We make decisions a lot of the time to take it really easy. It was a pretty successful day. And so we were kind of like winding down at around lunchtime, but there was these pillows that caught my eye and kind of on our way down. And so those guys are happy to like have a bite in the sun and just watch me ski a couple quick laps. First one went well, second one, it really felt like it came down to bad luck. Like three, two, one. As I made that right turn, that little bit of spray was enough to just knock this huge pillow off. It was kind of underneath where I could see it happening. Hit another like little drop into my slough. Oh, shit. Oh, 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 oh. As soon as I touched the snow, it was like blocks just smoked me through the trees. I've seen like nut ski lines like that. Like none of us even remotely saw it coming. Honestly, the most scarring thing of all of it was listening to your audio. Yeah. Well, I wanted to know like how long it took us. So I like went back in your audio and just like wanted to know the total time, but it was fucking raw. No! No! It wasn't like necessarily like what you think about as like a slab avalanche. It was, you know, a big enough broken pillow that it entrained enough snow to fully bury me. No! You got eyes on him? No! Get a probe and shovel! And it was kind of like wrong place, wrong time. No! No! Everyone on search? I don't have a signal. I do not have a signal either. We need all hands on deck now. I hit the tree so hard that I ended up breaking my arm and it ended up turning my beacon off. A buried victim with no signal is like pretty grim. Yeah, it was worst case scenario for sure. I was sure that like they were acquiring a signal and about to hit me with a probe at any second, but. It wasn't the first one on the scene. I had to come back and fly the drone. All the athletes that were sitting like ripped right over there immediately. And I was kind of just like, all right, I'm ready for these guys to get me out now. Like it's been a little while now. By the time I got my probe erected and stuck it in the snow a couple times, I felt something weird. I need to try more here. Dude, I got one right here. I got one right here. Yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's yeah. a human. Yeah. That's a human. Dig him out. Dig him out. You're okay, man. Nick. Come on, buddy. You train and train and train, and you, you like hit trash bags full of things or backpacks, and like those all feel like positive hits. But when you hit a person, it's like. Yeah. No doubt, that's what it is. My probe strike was lucky in some sense for sure, and it wouldn't have been much longer for us to like assemble our probe line and, and get you, yeah. but. But even another minute or two like makes a I difference know. I mean, in like that you situation. Were, like when we pulled you out, like you were conscious, but like not that conscious. That's for sure fading. Yeah. yeah. Like I was comfortable almost under there. Like, and yeah. then getting hit with the probe was sort of like a reality check again. Right. Cause I was just almost like falling asleep. Felt right. like. And as soon as I got hit, then it was like full panic again because I knew like, oh, okay, they're on top they're of me. Close, and, yeah. and then it's like, I didn't know if I was like a foot under or what. Like I knew I couldn't move, but like how right. much snow is that really? Right. And then I was kind of, it felt like a long time. Right. Like between the probe and, and getting dug out because it's like, you know, five feet of snow. We were all in t-shirts, but you were like unbelievably Freezing. cold. Yeah. And hypothermia and, is real and it's fast. Yeah. Know? Knowing about avalanche trains, kind of baseline, but also knowing some some low level first aid is really crucial. Otherwise, you know, you extract someone who's injured and you don't know what to do and they bleed out in your hands. Like that's very preventable at that mm -hmm. point. So with my training and like having a, a drone visual of what happened and like, it only took me three tries to get a yeah. solid hit on Which you. is like, that could never happen again. You couldn't no. do it faster than that no, if you I tried. I couldn't have been like prouder of our team. Like yeah. we did such a good job. All that training you've done, like it worked. It like, pays it, off. It, it saved your life that day. I mean, for we sure. had all the stuff out there we needed. Like you put like your your rescue sled and your your med kit and like all these extra things in your pack every day. That like when you do it every day, it's like it feels repetitive and you're like, oh, like maybe I don't need this today. Like maybe yeah, often then, you don't even look at it. You just like 
take it in and out of your bag each day though. Yeah, yeah. and then like the one time you need it, you're like, I'm never not yeah. gonna bring it again. Yeah. I feel like I finally am able to move forward from that because you just have to know that that risk is always there and you just be prepared as you can be, right? You feel like enough time's kind of gone by now where like hopefully we can put it yeah. more behind us and like, you know, there, there's always some kind of risk that you can't ever manage. But, like you could be mountain biking on a day that's kind of windy and like a Widowmaker branch can come just like crunch you when you're riding on the trail. There, there's always some kind of risk that you can't ever manage 100% right. and you can only do your best. The fact that you're not like sitting in your living room, mm -hmm. it's like an, an alive environment that's changing all the time. You know, you can only do your best to, to play safe in that kind of terrain, but at the end of the day, it's like the only safe way that's 100% sure thing safe is to not be there at all. First day on snow this winter. Yeah. I haven't even. That was my first tour. Yeah. Feeling you can't really get any other way.